Okay, so now we're going to talk about the light. My next guest, um, Tom, is a warrior on the front lines. So, Tom, you've been dealing with the dark side. Uh, you're a light penetrating the dark side. And even on your site, um, you've got scripture on there. And that's what really caught my attention when I first uh, started finding out exactly what you do. I think, is it, is it John 1, 5? Is that, is that the scripture? It, it is. We are the light. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. We're the light. Yeah. And we enter into the darkness. Okay. And this is what it's all about. So here's my question, Tom. Is the church, as we know it, you know, the church buildings, the people, the, the, the consciousness of Christians, do, are they where they need to be if right now things got ramped up with the Antichrist and there is the persecution of Christian that comes on rapidly? Uh, we see uh, lying signs. Are, are Christians where they need to be right now to be able to battle this? David, I wish I could tell you that um, the believers were armed and ready and they were fierce and they were um, just uh, entering into supplication and interceding. And there, there are many that are, but uh, I believe that the church as a whole, and uh, it's already been talked about, it's almost like they think that they're on a love boat cruise. And uh, they, uh, you know, whether depending on, you know, whether they're waiting on, um, on, on a rescue or they just think that, uh, that everything's going to be okay and we're not going to have to face any persecution. There's Christians pr facing persecution all around this world. And uh, there's actually Christians facing persecution in the United States of America. So the church is not ready. Uh, the church as a whole is not ready. I wish every church was like uh, Pastor Mike's church, but it's not. And, uh, you know, I hear, I hear boldness sometimes out of the church, and I hear talk of power, but I don't see a demonstration of power, okay? Yeah. And I, I don't say that, I say that very humbly. I say that as someone, I don't come in on my high horse. I don't say that I got it all together. I don't say that as somebody perfect. I say that out of deep concern and compassion for my brothers and sisters in Christ um, that I just want to see, you know, um, you've already said it, ramp it up and get ready and, and be prepared. Um, you know, the things, <laughs> the things that are happening this year, we've been talking about for years. And uh, I, I really am uh, disappointed at the response of the church. And uh, I would have liked to seen uh, a more of a demonstration of power. I've seen a lot of talk, but I haven't seen any action. Well, yeah, you know, I think this uh, COVID thing, uh, I think it was a beta test to see how we would respond, to see how the church would respond, to see how easily pastors and Christians would cave in, okay? Now, there's a few that stood up, okay? So I want to honor the people that have stood up. But Tom, don't you agree that the Antichrist is at work, and this is just a domino effect. One domino falls, it's going to continue on and on, number one. And number two, what is the next step of the Antichrist when it comes to making that major move? He's learned how to shut the churches down. He's learned how wimpy the pastors are. What do you see as the next move? So, yeah, there's no doubt that the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, the secret power of lawlessness, chapter 2, by the way, is already at work. So uh, the Antichrist has had 2,000 years to uh, strategize, to network, to prepare, to put in place uh, his plan. So um, there, there's, uh, there's no doubt that uh, uh, the church is, I feel like it's, I feel like I'm being nice, David, when I say the church is 30 years behind, okay? Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just trying to give them something there, okay? But um, uh, the church, you know, the spirit-filled believers in Christ, we're the only ones that can offer any kind of a fight. The world can't do anything. The world is yeah. defenseless against the Antichrist, against the enemy, but the believers in Christ that are studying his word, that are studying prophecy, that are studying spiritual warfare and walking it out are the only ones 
that can um, that can put up a fight. So uh, I know the end, and I know what's going to happen. Okay, and I'm not worried about that. But I also know what our duty is, and our duty is to uh, resist evil and to fight and to save and to rescue and to evangelize. And uh, you know, I mean, we know that. Um, that there's going to be a setup of a rule of the Antichrist on this earth, okay? We, we realize that. We see that coming. Uh, I can't tell you when it's going to happen, okay? Yeah. I thought it would happen five years ago, but I was wrong. Yeah. So I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're seeing that. I believe the, there's going to be persecution of the church ramped up. You know, you talk about, as I'm listening to you talk about legalized Jesus, I'm like, that's ingenious. That is an ingenious <laughs> campaign because— that's so real. I could I could yeah. just see that catching on. You know, um, I was in New York probably about eight years ago with Russ Dizdar. We were at a conference called the 2045 Conference, okay? And I just yeah. want to back you up um, yeah. because we're seeing, you know, again, the persecution of the church. And this has been planned out and, and, and um, everything is going according to plan, okay? But um, – I was with Russ Dizdar at this 2045 conference with all these scientists and these engineers and all of these, um, you know, uh, big brain thinkers. And they were all trying to figure out, David, how to get eternal life. Okay. And they were trying, they were trying to figure out they wanted eternal life. They didn't want to die. That was the big thing. And, and Ray Kurzweil was there. And it was in Lincoln Center, New York. And we would have breaks, you know, in between these sessions. And Russ Dizdar and I were there to study what was going on and what they were saying. And we would go out and there was this like little lunchroom. And we were talking to the people there. And we said, what about what Jesus said? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live. Right. And the, the look on their face, they were shocked because we said the word Jesus. We said the name Jesus. Wow. And somebody said, hey, hey, hey. Like they were trying to help us out. They said, hey, um, you can say God, but I wouldn't say Jesus. I wouldn't mm. say Jesus. So again, here we are. Legalize Jesus. I love that. That's ingenious because the one what? person who can give them eternal life was the one person they were rejecting. Exactly. And Tom, when you and uh, Russ went there, okay, and you spoke to them about Jesus, you were basically legalizing Jesus. You're, you're like a deputy, okay? And you're saying, look, I'm commissioned by God to tell you Jesus is legal, okay? And so basically, you were legalizing Jesus. Um, the work you do it was satanic ritual abuse, which I want to move into that, Um because I know you've worked with Russ, and as you know, I've dealt, uh, gone with Russ out on his boots on the ground, and I've done lots of interviews with him. So we're kind of on the same page, you and I, talking about satanic ritual abuse. Here's my question. Halloween coming around the corner. Is this time of year a time where there is an influx and an increase in satanic ritual abuse? Yeah, David. Uh all Hallows' Eve, Halloween, biggest ritual night of the year, uh, and um, the second biggest night is exactly six months later on Walpurgis Night, okay? So this is the time of year, um, and especially where we're at right now, it's the prep time. And the kidnappings and that sort of thing have already been taking place, but... You know, these occultists across the line, whether they're New Agers, whether they're Satanists, whether they're witches or Wiccans, they believe the veil between the, the physical world and the spiritual war, world is at its thinnest on this night. And they can, if they do a ritual, if they do a sacrifice, okay, they're going to get more, um, more bang for their buck, so to speak, okay? And this right. is the night that they want to do it. So no doubt this is going on. The world at large, um, you know, people involved in, you know, Halloween or trick or treat, they don't have a clue what's going on. They don't know what's behind the, you know, what's what's going on behind it. Um, yeah. But there are real rituals, real people, um, whether it would be sexual rituals or, um, you know, uh, human sacrifice, that sort of thing. Those things are happening and halloween halloween is the biggest ritual night of the year but of course there are tons of ritual ritual nights and ritual times all throughout the year yeah you know uh tom uh 
it's interesting. Let's take YouTube as an example. They will take down and demonetize videos that I do on satanic ritual abuse, uh, you know, things that is considered the dark side, right? They will take that down. These are things people need to hear, Tom. They need to hear this. This, this actually helps people. Yet, YouTube will play an ad on my channel before I talk about Jesus, a sex ad promoting sex. So would you explain to me what that means? In other words, they're saying, I'll show you, I want David, I'm going to let a naked girl dance uh, on your channel before you talk about Jesus. That's not going to hurt anybody. But David, don't talk about witches and demons hurting children. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, so Hollywood, YouTube, the social media, and um, the world, they love uh, to be entertained by satanic entertainment, okay? Hollywood makes millions of dollars uh, from movies, whether we're talking The Exorcist to, there's been a trend going on over, over the last 10 years of, of haunting movies and, and ghost story, you know, uh, TV shows and ghost stories. They love, okay, the satanic entertainment, but when it comes to the truth, uh, again, okay, and this ties right into your campaign, which I think is ingenious, okay? They're throwing out the one thing, okay, that, it, that can expel all that. When Hollywood makes a movie on Satanism, uh, it's always the same thing. It's, it's uh, the Catholic rite of exorcism. It's a priest who has sin in his life, and they always show that the demonic is more powerful, okay? Well, if yeah. they were to make a real movie, and if they were to pay attention to some of your shows, they would find out that actually no God is more powerful. The authority of Christ is more powerful. And if they were to make a true movie uh, or a TV show, it would be real boring for them because it would be over real quick because the Christian could cast out the demonic, okay? And it's over. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. In other words, they, the reason it's gaslighting, the reason they don't want you to come against the, the dark side is because they are the dark side. Yeah. They don't want the exposure but yet they want to keep pushing that dark agenda upon people. And uh, so, Tom, my last question. Uh, but, oh, by the way, will you stay with us? Uh, we disconnect from YouTube and Facebook and we go strictly on uh, Apple TV, Amazon, uh, Roku. We do what, what we call underground. Will you stay with us as we go underground at nine o'clock? Yeah. All right, great. Because what we're going to have a lot of my viewers uh, our gatherers have some questions for you. I'm sure things they want to talk about. Um, so my last question uh, before I let you go. Um, children um, that are being abused for the purpose of demonic powers, okay? I'm, I'm being very specific. This is for a very specific thing where a demon gets their powers from children. Two questions. Number one, do they really get power from children? They say young blood. Or is that just a is that just a figment of their dark imagination? Or does is that really the case? So um so coven members and Satanists love to appease the demonic and they love to appease Satan. Satan asks for uh, a uh, innocent sacrifice. And how, how much more innocent can you get than a child, okay? As Christians, yeah. we believe in that there's power in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, okay? Without the shedding yeah. of blood, there is no remission of sins. But they believe in power in the blood also, okay? And they, yeah. they love, okay, of course, we live in America, uh, you know, thousands, you know, of babies are killed by abortion each week. They love that spilt blood, okay? And uh, the demonic love any kind of spilt blood, but especially the perversion and the ruining of children, whether it's sexual abuse or whether it's spilling their blood through torture or through sacrifice. So um, I, I believe that, um, that it empowers the demonic more personally, 
okay? okay. But they could sacrifice anybody. I mean, sometimes they're looking for somebody that won't go missing, okay, uh, yeah. many times. And uh, if, and, uh, or, you know, children are easy to, to kidnap, you know, yeah. a lot easier than an adult. And uh, yeah, I mean, they do receive power from it. But again, I have to remind people uh, that the shed blood of Christ is more powerful than any ritual, than anything that they can summon or send to us. Uh, absolutely. Especially, especially if you legalize Jesus, if you legalize Jesus. You see, Tom, everything you're saying is correct. But if we as Christians will make Jesus legal again, starting in our hearts, starting in our, in our households, in our neighborhoods, meaning we're the ones that have the power. We don't need to be afraid of the enemy. We don't need to be afraid of what people are going to say about us. But correct me if I'm wrong. If we will legalize Jesus, there'll be a lot less kids disappear off the streets and a lot less demons being able to have a feast, especially on Halloween, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you like me, and you're tired of organized religion. The same kind of preacher preaching feel-good sermons. I'm a mom raising two kids, and I want them to hear the truth. I'm a gatherer right here on David Heavener Live every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we learn what it means to be a real Christian, to cast our demons, heal the sick, and fight the good fight. I'm not famous, and I'm certainly not rich. But I am a child of the living God, and I stand on truth. I hope you'll join me and many others right here on David Heavener Live, where we learn to use our God-given power. I've come to chew gum and kick the devil's rear end, and I'm all out of gum. They've made many, many movies about aliens, but the question is, are they angelic or demonic? Why don't they want to acknowledge uh, the supernatural? Uh, the seminary education today, that when pastors are being trained, there's no emphasis on the supernatural, even though the Bible's a supernatural book. As in the days, days of no, uh, so it will be. Yeah. And it goes down to, well, what is their ultimate purpose? Inaugurate the Antichrist.